Good morning, church family. Um, Jennifer and I sure miss everyone, and we are um, missing you and looking forward to when we can be back together again. And we hope that you and your family are doing well and uh, staying healthy. So this is our first online Bible study, Sunday Bible study lesson, and we're going today to be in the book of Galatians. Now, if you still have your Bible study books from when we were at church with our lessons, we've got a few more lessons in here. So we're going to be on page 106, and we're going to follow through in the scripture there. If you don't have your Bible study book, don't worry. All you need is one of these, and we're going to be looking at scripture, and that's really all you're going to need. So um, in a moment, if you want to get ready, we're going to be looking at chapter 5 in Galatians, verses 13 through 15. And then we're going to be jumping into chapter 6 and looking at verses 1 through 5. And this is Paul's epistle or letter to the churches in Galatia. Now the churches in Galatia had kind of been messing up. Things had been going um, awry within the churches. There was dispute, false teaching. There were a lot of things going on that they were having problems with. So what we're looking at in this book is um, Paul's uh, letter to them to help them walk through correcting the problems they were having within the church. The first four chapters are Paul helping them sort through their problems biblically, which is really how we should all sort through our problems. Um, anything we're struggling with, any guidance we get in our life, this is what we want to depend on as God's word and how God speaks to us in his word. So in chapter 1 through 4, Paul is parting, um, pointing out to them biblically. In chapter 5, um, Paul is turning the conversation to a practical application, how, how to begin to work out of the mess they've gotten themselves into. This part of the letter is really the crux of the understanding of the book of Galatians and its foundational message of grace. So it's a great book to spend some time in. It's a book of encouragement. So you might want to think about reading um, the entire book of Galatians. There are only six chapters in the book. So we're going to begin by looking um, at verses um, 13 through 15 in chapter 5. But before we do that, um, let me open it up in prayer. So if you would bow your heads with me. Um, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to come together using technology, Lord. Um, we've been missing each other, and we miss worshiping together, Lord. And we're going to make the best of what we have, Lord. And so we're thankful that we can meet together today, that we can look at your word, and that you will speak to each and every one of us, um, having us hear what we need to hear to take away from this lesson what you have for us, Lord. So we are grateful. We thank you so much for everything you've done for us, Lord, and you continue to do for us. And we, um, we ask you to bless our time together and to um, just watch over the rest of our day, Lord, as we go forward. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, verses 13 through 15 in the book of Galatians. So, this is the Apostle Paul talking to the churches. He says, You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. These few verses are really the key to working successfully through the challenges that we all face when we go through challenging times, not only in our church, but just in our relationships. So each part of this is meant to stir the church up, to cause them to see that they need to serve each other in love, um, which is the very thing that Paul believes is going to enable them to get through this current crisis. And Paul does this in an amazing way, and this is actually God speaking through Paul. It's not really Paul, but it is Paul. And he is first warning them, excuse me, he's first reminding them of something, then he warns them, and then he encourages them. So the first reminder is this. Um, in verse 13, the first part of 13, he says, For you were called to be free. So he's reminding them that 
He's talking about a freedom that they have as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and that they're no longer under the law, but they're under, um, under grace and they are no longer under the penalty of sin. So he's telling them there's a privilege here that you have now, but there's also a responsibility that goes with that privilege. And then in 13 and 15, he's warning them. He says, only do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. And he says also, but if you bite and you devour, watch out, because you're going to be consumed by one another. And then luckily he gives encouragement. He says in verse 14 and 15, but he says to serve one another in love and to love your neighbor as yourself. Paul is telling us that this is a heart issue. It's not a duty issue. God is instructing us to love others by remembering the incredible love that he has for us and the sacrifice that he made for us, which is easy to lose sight of in the day-to-day -day busyness of our lives. But when we, when we can hang on to that, it um, motivates us in a way that's um, spiritual in nature. We begin to look at the circumstances of our lives differently. So when Paul's talking about the flesh, I mean, what does he really mean when he says the flesh? He warns us about the flesh. And the flesh refers to, um, probably you all know this, but the flesh, flesh refers to our sinful nature. It's the uh, self-absorbed side of us. Um, when we focus inward on ourselves, um, sins like selfishness, greed, and an uncaring attitude show up in our lives, and it affects our relationships, and it potentially affects our um, walk with God. It can derail us when we fall into the sin of self-centeredness. So although our flesh was crucified with Christ on the cross, um, it's obviously not eliminated. We still have a sin nature within us that's pulling at us all the time. And we live in a sinful world. So we have a lot that challenges our attention and tries to pull us away from God. Um, but scripture, thank God, never leaves us without a solution to the problem, right? So let's read one more time about the problem. And then, thank God, we're going to read about the solution again. And we're going to read this in just a little further down in chapter 5. We're going to go to... Galatians 19 through 25, and here Paul's getting a little bit more in our face about our flesh and where we tend to stray. So in verse 19, chapter 5, he says, The acts of the sinful nature are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But here's our hope. So Paul says in verse 22, and you probably know this part of scripture, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such thing there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature or the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is our command that tells us how our hearts should be as we put feet to our faith and begin to serve people the way God calls us to serve. We express that Christ-like love to others by serving them, but not just serving them. We need to point them to Christ. Billy Graham once said um, a long time ago that there are lots of good things we can do for people, and there are lots of good organizations that do great things for people. But if we don't point them to Christ and tell them why we're doing it, they will never get their deepest need met. So as we love and we serve, we need to make sure that we're given to glory to God and not to ourselves. 
So if you're like me, um, there are probably lots of ideas you have about serving. But I'm going to warn you right now, we're going to look at some more scripture. And I don't want you to get too comfortable because I'm really uncomfortable with this next part of scripture that Paul is going to talk about. And Paul is going to instruct us on a form of service that is really critical, but it's one that I really tend to avoid most of the time. And this was such a reminder to me. So we're going to go in one moment into chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. So you might want to go there in your Bible. But Paul tells us, get ready for this, to confront each other. And he says to do it in love. Um, I love to serve. Um, I love to help feed the hungry. And I love to open the door at church and greet people. Um, I love to make phone calls and make sure people are doing okay. I'm actually learning to love to pray for people as I get more comfortable with that. But that's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about us, um, most, for most of us, getting out of our comfort zone and being obedient to the scripture and speaking into each other's lives to help us grow in our walk, to grow in our maturity, to grow in how we relate to people. So let's go to chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. So Paul says, Brothers, in verse 1, If someone is caught in sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, for you may also be tempted. Carry each other's burdens in this way, and you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions, then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself with somebody else. For each one of us should carry his own load. One of the most important things that we can do as brothers and sisters in Christ is to help each other see our blind spots. Um, we all have them, and most of the time we don't see them. Um, Paul is challenging the church and us to gently, lovingly, and sensitively, sensitively um, serve others by helping them see the way they wound themselves, but also helping them see the way they might wound others. Um, this act of service requires a lot of prayer because we can become judgmental so easily and we can go, oh, there's something they're doing wrong or there's something that they could do better. And, it's not what he's talking about. He's telling us to look at each other in love and see where we can help each other um, walk more Christ-like because we all have our issues, we all have our histories, we all have our story, we all have our brokenness in us. Sometimes we recognize it and we work on it, but oftentimes we don't. So he's talking about helping each other prayerfully um, to speak into each other's lives about this issue. Um, and this applies not just in church, when we're doing church things, but it applies in marriages, in our marriages. Um, it applies in our friendships. It might apply in how we raise our families. But the idea is that we help each other grow because we so often miss the things that are right in front of us. And I really appreciate the people in my life who aren't always telling me, oh, you're doing fine, no problems, don't worry about anything. I appreciate the lot of people in my life who tell me the truth and tell me what they see about me that they maybe like. I, it's always nice to hear that, but I want to hear what they, what they think about maybe um, what I can do better or what I should think about or what I should maybe pray about. Um, so that's what Paul's asking us to do, is to keep our eyes open and to watch for how we can speak into each other's lives with love. And also that we, as believers, would receive that in a loving way and not be defensive about it, and not push it away. Um, so a tough way to go, and we're not going to do it on our own. We're going to do it by the power of the Holy Spirit and, um, and trust. And we're going to trust. So also in these verses, um, the ones we just read, Paul's calling us to a couple of other quick things. Um, he's asking us to carry each other's burdens, to walk with each other when we go through hard things, um, to show up when someone needs us, to know that they can count on us to be there for them, um, to, um, to help us carry, to help each other carry our burdens together. What a privilege it is, really, to be able to help someone. 
Um, he's also asking us that we um, let go of our pride and see people can't read our minds. So if you have a need, you need to ask for it. You need to put it out there. You need to be willing to let people come in your life to help you. Um, and what a privilege it is both ways. It's a blessing both ways to be able to do that. And lastly, in this verse, he's talking about really having an honest, healthy view of ourselves. I mean, a lot of times we know where our brokenness is or we know where our shortcomings are. And he's telling us to um, view ourselves in reality and be open to correction with an understanding of what we're like. So a lot of good stuff here. So we're going to jump real ahead, quick to, um, we're going to start to finish up here, but we're going to go to verses, um, Galatians, still in chapter 6, but verse 10. So let me read that to you. He says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. So that's what we've been talking about. But then he says, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So Paul is speaking about demonstrating love to all, but especially our fellow believers. Relationships in the church, like your family, are to be held at the highest level. So when it comes to serving, don't wait for somebody to invite you to serve. Um, start to look for those opportunities. Start to pray about opportunities. And... You know, sometimes we don't know where we're good at serving, um, but the only way you find out is by trying different things. You know, you might want to work in the kitchen, or you might want to help in Sunday school, or you might want to be a greeter. Um, there's so many different things, and in time, if you don't already know, you begin to find the way God wired you and, and what brings you the most joy. But don't pick something or, or become, don't go in a direction where you're feeling so comfortable that you're not being challenged. That's how we grow. We have to we have to let God challenge us, stretch us, grow us. Because when we're too comfortable, we just, we like being there. We don't want to go anywhere else. Not only you, but a lot of times fear holds me back from being willing to try to serve in places that I've never served before. Um, you could ask my wife the things that I struggle with, and um, she would be um, saying an amen to what I'm talking about. Fear can hold you back. And um, you have a unique gift, and God's given it to you specifically. And I'm not just talking about in the church, but I'm talking about how you are in the world. And you don't want fear to be what holds you back from pursuing that gift and trusting that God's going to be there to help you grow in that gifting. And we're going to fail. We do that all the time because we, I do. I, my pride gets in the way. I try to do it myself, and then I remember to. Rely on trust in God, and um, He's been faithful so many times. Um, he really has. The possibilities are really endless, and you know what God's putting on your heart. You know, as you pray, as you read the Word, as you talk to fellow believers, you, you get a sense of what God's putting in your heart. So let me ask you a question: um, If fear wasn't an issue, and you didn't have any fear at all, um, what would you do? For God, what do you feel like God is calling you to do? Um, would it be maybe to invite someone to go to church with you? Um, maybe share your faith with somebody that you wanted to share your faith with? Maybe sing a song, maybe write a book. Um, the possibilities are endless. And, um, and life is short, it goes by really fast. So here's what I forget, and I want to remind you because I need to remind myself. We are all children of the King of the universe, children of the King of creation. We are children of God, and we have the Holy Spirit living within us. If God is calling you to do something, all you need to do is trust Him and take that first step. That's so hard sometimes because I'm not always sure God's going to show up when I take that first step. And so if I depend on him, and I, and I really trust that God will do that, and trust in the Holy Spirit, God is going to show up. And I think about the example of um, Peter, and they're out on the ocean, and the boat's in a storm, and the apostles are in a boat, and Christ isn't there. And they're just like, oh my gosh, we're going to die. And um, Peter looks out, they all look at me, they see Christ walking on the water. And Peter's like, Lord, 
Lord, can I walk out to you? Can I, can I come out to you? And Christ says, sure, come on out. So Peter puts his faith, and he puts his fear aside. He puts his faith into action. He steps out of that boat, and he walks on the water. Well, then quick, Peter quickly realizes that, oh my gosh, I'm walking on the water, and the waves are everywhere, and well, he sinks. So Peter's, Peter's fear came back and got a hold of him. Peter had a lot of fears. You know, he, he denied Christ. He had a lot of fears. Peter had a lot of issues. But you know what? When the resurrected Christ got a hold of him on the beach that day, Peter, everything in Peter changed, and Peter's fear went away. And Peter became so bold for the Lord, so bold. And he died for his faith, and he died for his boldness. We have to remember that um, we have a Savior who has defeated death, and he holds us all in the palm of his hand. So don't be afraid. I'm talking to myself as well as you. Just don't be afraid. So I want to close with some prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come back to you again, and um, we are so grateful for your written, for your written word, your inspired word. Lord, I can't imagine life without this manual for our life that we can run to, um, we can memorize, we can, we can lean on, Lord. We, there's so much here for us, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that you've left with us, Lord, to to direct us in our lives, to correct us in our lives, to empower us in our lives, Lord. We're so grateful for that. And you have given us all unique spiritual giftings, Lord. And um, sometimes it's hard to for us to understand what those giftings are. It can take time, Lord. It can take us trying different things. But you have a purpose. We're all still here, Lord. You have a specific purpose for us in this life, Lord. We pray for your spirit to stir our hearts for what you have for us and to give us the confidence, Lord, to take that first step so that we can get out of our comfort zone and find a way to walk in a bigger way for you, Lord. And I don't just mean the big things, Lord, but I mean in the day-to-day -day, um, when we come across people in a store, when we wake up with our children or our spouse and to wake up with hearts of thankfulness for all of that, but mostly for you, Lord, and what you bless us with and what you continue to bless us with. So I pray that you will take what we study today, Lord, and you will just stir all of our hearts to, um, to see what you want us to do and how you want us to move forward, Lord. We are so thankful for how much you love us, Lord. And I pray you will continue to watch over all of us, Lord, especially until we can all continue to be back together again, worshiping you together again. and and being able to love on each other again. And uh, we pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Uh, that was kind of fun, kind of different. I've never done this before. Um, I hope it was a blessing to you. Um, until we can return to Sunday school in person, um, we're going to continue to do a Bible study online in person every Sunday. So next week, get ready for this. You're going to see the smiling face, and I think still bearded face of Kenny Barnes. So Kenny's looking forward to doing it. He's going to be in this book, and he's going to be um, teaching uh, on page, I think he's on page 113 when he'll be. So if you want to read ahead and prepare for that, you can. Um, and I would encourage you, and I think you're all probably very good about this, but, you know, stay in touch with each other. Um, pray for each other. Um, stay in the Word. Stay in prayer. Um, if you have a need or physical need or if you need prayer, um, you can call the church, um, but you can call a deacon um, and they can pray with you or they can, they can round up help to help you with something. If you need groceries or you need some work done in the yard, um, just don't hesitate to ask. And we do have a 24-hour prayer line and you can get that phone number from our church website. Um, so... I uh, miss you guys, and um, thank you so much for spending time with me this morning. And um, I pray that you'll keep your eyes on God and keep your heart open for what he has for you. And uh, hopefully we'll be worshiping, worshiping together soon. Until then, God bless you, and stay safe.